Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Eric and I like to read. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different and I'm actually going to be doing an interview with an author about her new book that came out. So this is like a little series that I'm going to be doing on my channel. I'm not going to do it every Saturday, but occasionally on a Saturday I'll post a video of an author interview that I've conducted with another author. And so today's author is Lisa Luciano. She recently came out with the book The Chosen Ones. The Chosen Ones is a mystery crime novel that goes into the icy and scandalous world of figure skating. So it kind of dives deep into all the different things that we don't see behind the scenes and all the stuff that happens in the attempts to go for gold. This is a fiction novel, but a lot of it is based on real life facts that Lisa has picked up throughout her career as a journalist. So without further ado, let's jump into the author interview and we can hear from Lisa herself. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, this is my first author interview series that I'm going to be starting and this is Lisa Luciano. She is the author of The Chosen Ones. And so Lisa, I'll let you give yourself a brief introduction. Well, thank you, Eric. Uh, I'm honored to be the first person. Um, well, I've been a teacher for 40 years and I just retired. And well, during all that time, I was trying to still work on the fact that I wanted to be a writer. From the time I was in high school, I was the bookie kid who read every book. And I was an athlete, I was a gymnast, so I read a lot of sports books. So I thought, well, I'll be a sports journalist. But after I went to college and studied journalism, I came out like a lot of people when I realized, how do I make a living at this? It's a nice dream. It's a great profession. But at the time, and I'm not going to tell you how long ago it was, but at the time, women were not welcome. It was an all boys sports club, right, for the writers. And it was really tough. So that's how I became a teacher. I started teaching English and technology. And by the way, you are my hero because you are everything that I've taught my students for 40 years. First of all, to love the English language and to want to read but also the use of the technology. And you managed to put those two things together beautifully. And that's what it's supposed to be about, social media and everything. So no, seriously, um, you show the positive aspect of what that can be when you put the two things that you like together. So, um, so I kept the dream alive, but I didn't really know how to make it work. So then I fast forward, several years and i loved figure skating as well as gymnastics because it was so similar mm -hmm. so i was watching one day and i and i realized the olympics was coming up this was 1991 and when i heard that the greatest skaters in the world which were the, the ones who had just turned professional after the last olympics weren't going to be able to compete my journalistic cap came on and I said, wait a minute, there's gotta be a story here. Why not? Because professionals in every other sport were able to go back. Mm -hmm. So of course I did some uh, research and found out it's about like everything else, the money. And they realized that the professionals had become so successful uh, after the, the 88 Olympics that they wanted the people in charge of the skating world wanted the piece of the pie but it wasn't their money. So they held the Olympics hostage basically and said, if you want the biggest stage in the world, we're the only game in town, you better give us part of what you're getting as professionals and we'll let you go back. And when I found out that that's what it really was about, I was, I was furious. It wow. insulted every writing bone in my body because actually the way I decided I wanted to become a sports writer, I don't know if you're old enough to remember this, but there was a book called Ball Four by Jim Bouton. It's a classic. And it was the mm -hmm. first time someone actually told the story behind the scenes, for real. He was shunned by the entire sports world. The sports media people hated him because he spoiled the party by telling yeah. the real secrets. But that inspired me when I realized he was trying to fix things that were wrong. And that made me want to try to do that too. Little did I know where it was going to lead me eventually. But um, so when I was complaining to a friend one day about why can't those skaters go back? It's about the money. That's just, that's not what it is. It's supposed to be the best athletes in the world. So she dared me 
And she said, well, you're a writer, aren't you? <laughs> and why don't you write an article, send it to the New York Times? Which I thought was ridiculous because there was no way to break in at that point. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh, so you don't think you're that good, huh? Is that what it's really about? And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Don't challenge me. I'm an a I was an athlete. I'm a competitor. So on a dare, I actually sent an article. And to my utter shock, they published it. Wow. Yeah, I was a nobody and they did publish the I had no credential, nothing. But I guess they liked what the article was because it was shaking up things quite a bit. And so the reaction was so unbelievable. And I'm not taking credit. All I did was tell the truth because mm -hmm. that's what a good journalist is supposed to do. Um, but the fans were outraged. And because of that article, they actually changed the rules, which they never do. Wow. That's, yeah. that's incredible. From, it, it really is. I still can't believe it actually happened to this day. From 92 to 95, they opened a window to allow professionals to reinstate as what they call eligible skaters. Um, and they did, but they realized they really didn't need that platform. They were so big on their own. I mean, skating mm -hmm. at that time, we're talking, I ended up writing for the Times from 91 to 94 because the article did so well that they said, keep it coming. So I just dug into everything I could. But at the time, skating was second in the TV ratings only to the NFL. Wow. Which it, it has never been there again. That, it, you couldn't go on and watch TV without seeing it everywhere. Yeah. And um, so one of the things I took up next, because I was like a kid in a candy store. I'm like, ooh, <laughs> what do I get to write about now? Uh, I took on the, what the elephant in the room, which was the cheating by the judges. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew they were cheating. Everybody. But nobody dared say anything. Well. I had no skin in the game. I was not part of the skating world. There was nothing they could do to me. And I was telling the truth. So I started going after that and um, wrote a series of articles. And basically I said to them, look, people know you're doing this. And what I had discovered, which was so disturbing, and all the things that I discovered as I was writing and for those four years, I put into The Chosen Ones. Mm -hmm. So the chosen ones is more realistic than people will realize. Um, the murder mystery part of it is made up, but everything else is based on real skaters and real events and things that I learned as I was doing my research. Um, so I told them, I said, don't do this. You're going to get caught. You're going to do something so big that the whole world will see it and there's, there'll be no way out for you. And mm -hmm. that's exactly what happened. And it destroyed the sport because the ratings plummeted. People thought it was more like WWF than a real sport because what they were doing was rigging the competition in advance. The judges would form little uh, cabals mm -hmm. and work together. So let's say the Czechoslovakian judge would go to the British judge and say, I'll vote for your pair skaters if you'll vote for my ice dancers. So before the skaters got on the ice, it was right. already decided. It's all rigged, yeah. Yeah, and, um, and then they got caught. There was an Olympic Games where the Canadian pair went up against the Russian pair, and clearly the Canadians had won, only they didn't. Yeah. And, it, and it just exploded. It was a big controversy. They gave the goal to the, the Russians, but then they said, oh, well, no, we'll give it to the Canadians too, and that didn't make anybody. It was a mess. Yeah, and exactly that sounds like a mess. Saying, it really was. It was terrible. Um, but that was it. The jig was up. And then that's when sports writers, TV commentators, the skaters and the coaches said, I don't care what happens now. I know I have to say something. I have to speak up against this. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm hoping that by writing those articles, I cracked open the door. Mm -hmm. But the thing that was um, what most people do not know, so I'm going to give you the inside story, <laughs> was after four years of writing for the Times, and I even got, I was so lucky, I got to do the Nancy Tanya article for that Olympics, the 94 wow. Olympics. Yeah, so I knew I, the sense of responsibility to get it right because I knew everybody was going to read it and everybody was going to believe it. Um, and I never was proven to have made a mistake or been incorrect or make something up. Right after that, I got a call from this editor of the Times and he said, thank you for all your hard work, but we no longer need you. Oh. 
And I could only come to one conclusion, even though to this day, I will never be able to prove it. The people who I was writing about needed to stop me. Yeah. And they so I truly believe that they put pressure on the New York Times uh, and said, look, you want access to the skating world? Because they were still popular at the time. Mm -hmm. Then stop printing her work. There, there was no other explanation. Yeah, that's so unfortunate too. And that also shows like, the harsh reality of how cutthroat the journalism industry really is, it is. which is <laughs> that was actually one of my questions I was going to say um, how competitive was it for you working in the sports journalism industry but like you're telling me right now it seems like it was pretty competitive yeah and even more so now because um, I've seen enough go on this was 91 to 94. What I see now is a disturbing situation with journalism. The comp competition is so fierce because there's so many outlets. You have social media, mm -hmm. um, have 24 hour day news stations, all these things that other people can go to instead of a newspaper or whatever, that they're right. all rushing to get the material out. And if they make a mistake, it's, oh, my bad, I'm sorry. That wasn't true, was it? Or that mm. wasn't correct. But that's not journalism. It's it's just that they're fighting for their lives. Newspapers are folding up. You know, people just don't want to get their, their information that way anymore. And you have people who have the platform of all the social media mm -hmm. uh, sites where everybody has an opinion, but an opinion is not journalism. Right. Yeah. It just... can start that you're trying to prove something that you believe in, but you have to find the facts. And yeah, the exactly. Facts disappeared so i think it's more cutthroat now than ever before because they will write anything to, mm -hmm. if they think somebody will read it or somebody will turn on that station and because we're so divided it's gotten even uglier politically divided um because they're also out to to get the other guy the other side mm -hmm. in, in any way they can and i just don't think it's good enough and it's not fair to everybody but especially a new generation of young people coming up I would teach information literacy. I did for the last few years. And they would say, Miss L, how do I know what I just read is true? Mm -hmm. And, and so I could help them. I could give them tips and ideas about how to uh, check a resource or whatnot. But in the end, you can't be sure. I'm not even sure sometimes when I read things uh, because they don't say where it came from. Well, then how do you know that you should believe right. I just told you so right. I don't think we're in a good place journalistically speaking right now yeah and the industry of journalism has changed so much because if you like if you think about it the form of media that you're taking in is constantly changing and like you said everybody's just trying to rush to get everything out there that nobody's fact checking anymore but they're just trying to push content and push content and like I like I understand this. I'm not a journalist, but like I do deal with multiple forms of media because I do um, book blogging. And then at the same time, I'm also doing video format of book tubing. So it's kind of like, I don't know, it's a very intense area for a lot of people. And to be an expert in that would be really like you'd have to know a lot to be an expert in all these fields. Like all that being put together is just it's very intense. And we're all just learning as we go. Right. Even the people who run Facebook and all their Twitter and all, they don't know what to do now. Mm -hmm. The pressure's on them to not let fake news get through, this get through that. But how do you do that? You, you've opened up Pandora's box and no, nobody should be able to print lies or something that's hurtful to somebody if it's not true. But how do you even begin to rein that in now? Mm -hmm. um, and how much is too much how much is not enough in terms of making rules it seems like we have to make a lot of mistakes and then say whoops that didn't work let's back off and let's try again and see if we can co go another way at it but there's no roadmap mm. we have yeah. no idea how to do it exactly um okay so do you want to show the viewers your book because i can see it in the background there so there. everyone this is lisa's book the chosen ones and so this was not, um, it was partially fact, but like it's not real life, right? This is a fiction book? Well, the murder mystery plot is fake. It's uh, basically that 
a, a, the sports editor of a newspaper gets this message left on his answering machine. And it's set in the 1990s, the time period when I was writing about skating. So it's an answering machine, not voicemail. But, um, and someone says, before the Olympics is over, one of the best skaters in the world is going to be dead. Please find out who it is and stop it. So he asks the reporter if he's willing to try. And he's like, skating, figure skating? Because he was doing, you know, football and all the, the big sports. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he knows nothing about the subject. And he's like, no, you got to get in there, go undercover. And if this works out, it's going to be the story of a lifetime. It's going to be a Pulitzer Prize story. So, of course, he decides to do it. And so we see this world through his eyes, which is, I know nothing about this sport, but that's okay because you don't have to know anything about skating to enjoy the book. It's not a girl book. It's not a guy's book. It's, it's just, it's a, a, on the surface, it's a murder mystery. But right. the point of me writing the book was there was so much more for me to tell that I never got to do because of what happened with the times that I said, I have to be the voice for the skaters and the coaches and all the people who cannot dare say a word. They already are dealing with a system. And that's why I called it the chosen ones where mm -hmm. you have to be chosen to win. You can't win. It doesn't matter how good you are. And that just drove me crazy being a, a, you know, an athlete myself. And so I did everything I could to put everything in there. And just some of the things that I uncovered, um, homophobia in the time period of this book skaters would not come out because they didn't know if it was going to be considered okay to be a champion and be gay now the world has changed yeah i was gonna say like that's very heartbreaking but, to hear that well that's the thing is you have to remember we've come a long way i mean we've got a long way to go but we mm. come a long way in regard to certain areas um except now something really interesting that's been coming up i just saw something in the news today about it they're very homophobic in Russia. Mm -hmm. They have laws against living that lifestyle. And somebody invented this um, ice cream that it has like colorful swirls. It's all different colors. And somebody came along and said, no, that's promoting that lifestyle, the LGBTQ lifestyle, because it has multiple colors. That's how bad it is there. And some of the figure skaters were afraid of that as well, because the former Soviet Union countries are very powerful. They're, they all have judges and they, you know, they're this big block of, of voting. And they were afraid that if they came out, the male skaters, they, wouldn't, they had no chance to win because of the way people in that country felt or have been raised to feel. I mean, mm -hmm. crazy things you wouldn't even imagine are going on behind the scenes. You have, I know there was, well, there's a character in the book based on a real skater who he had to go to rehab in between his competitions because he couldn't get on the ice if he didn't because he had an uh, alcohol abuse, a drug abuse problem, just crazy things were going on. And um, the women, it's mostly the women, um, they're, they're now suffering from depression and eating disorders, um, everything you can imagine. And they're quitting the sport at the peak of their their careers because they, they want to save their lives. I wow. mean, just, yeah, I mean, just an awful lot was going on behind the scenes. And yeah. now, unfortunately, thank goodness, the gymnasts stepped forward and found the courage to talk about the sexual abuse by the coach. Well, this is in their mm -hmm. case, it was the doctor. But now the skaters are coming forward and saying, my coach has been abusing me for years. Or I quit the sport because I couldn't tell anybody and I couldn't take it anymore. I took everything I could think of that is it's beyond the sport it's could it's even beyond sports in general it's just things that people are going through especially young people the pressure just the pressure of athletics and the expectations and um and i just put it in there and i gave every character a different storyline to represent a real skater that i knew of or real things that had happened i want people to think about it i want them to talk about it because that's what the articles did when people started to talk about, like, that's not right. Well, that's where change begins. Civil right. conversation, intelligent conversation, stick to the facts. And uh, so that was really the thing that motivated me to want to write the book, uh, because it's more about the bigger issues going on in sports. I mean, look at what has happened to other sports with the cheating scandals. Baseball, football, pick one. It's getting worse <laughs> and worse. 
and mm -hmm. we have learned nothing from what figure skating went through and and paid the price for um so that's really the book is mostly real uh, okay. yeah <laughs> um uh, but the it, the fun of it is the murder mystery could because obviously nobody's tried i don't think anybody's tried to kill a skater yeah um, although they all probably wanted to kill each other at some point to get to that gold medal that's the thing too mm. about what high stakes sports and the money and the fame do to people uh and the, the anything to win mentality and it's it's pretty ugly but it's real mm -hmm. so. and personally like i don't know that much about figure skating but i had no idea that it was that cutthroat when it came to that sport i had had no idea so that like this is interesting to learn myself and it makes it that much more exciting going into a book like that because you're learning so much new information about this sport and you're also incorporating the murder mystery aspect to it which just makes it that much more intense so like i think that it's all put together to create a very compelling story and i think a lot of readers are going to enjoy this Oh, I hope so. I hope they give it a chance because I know there's a lot of stereotypes around the sport for men, especially thinking, well, uh, the costumes and the sequins and mm -hmm. it's, it's not about that at all. It's, it's the harsh reality of behind the scenes in high level sports and what we're doing to these young people, um, what we're doing, we're dishonoring the sport mm -hmm. by with the cheating and, and letting people just melt down and when doing nothing to help them, to protect them, they're very young usually when they go into skating, just like gymnastics and many other sports. Mm -hmm. And if there's not someone advocating for them, they will just say yes and do whatever they're told. And that's why these things happen. Um, and they have been silent for too long. And I understand. You, you not, don't want to throw away everything you've worked your whole life for because you right. said the wrong thing to the wrong person at the wrong time. But um, so that that's to me that's what journalism was always supposed to be and mm -hmm. what i wanted it to be and why i wanted to get involved is because there's nothing more powerful than the truth mm -hmm. just because it's dressed up in a little you know a nice package doesn't mean it's any less true and it doesn't just because it's true doesn't make it less interesting in mm -hmm. fact i think it's more fascinating when people find out and they don't believe me and they're like that really happened i'm like mm. yeah. <laughs> yeah it did it did I think it's also really cool that you drew upon your past and past careers that you had to create this novel. I think that's really, really cool. And I'm, I'm super excited to read into it because I want to experience it kind of like you're giving us that experience through your book that you went through. So I think that's really cool. And I'm, I'm very interested to get to that. Now a little bit on the lighter side, <laughs> I'll ask some more just like fun book questions, which I would do with anybody on um, my blog or something like that but before okay. i get to that i wanted to note i love your bookends in the background with the little <laughs> karate kick i think that's so adorable <laughs> well, that that's a, there's a story behind that um i just retired and one of the teachers who we call it technology now but it would have been called shop class mm -hmm a gifted uh, art, wood artisan. I mean, he can make anything. And he knew I was retiring, so he wanted to do something special for me. And the reason he gave me martial arts kickers is, and, and of course the book ends because he knows I'm a writer, is because I'm a fourth degree Taekwondo master. Wow, yeah, I did see that when I was on your website. I saw that and I was like, that's really I, cool. Yeah, I started as an adult and actually it's because of an injury I suffered as a gymnast. And I suffered with it all through my life. And someone told me one time, they said, do Taekwondo. It, the muscles will get stronger. You're gonna feel better. It will actually help the injuries. And I fell in love with it. So to this day, I, I still teach it. Um, and that's why um, he gave me those bookends. And I, I just, they're so well-crafted. I don't, you can't see the detail on them, but I, 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 you know, I just thought, why not <laughs> I'll put yeah. them up? Well, even from here, they look very detailed. They're really cool. Like, I think they're awesome. So, yeah. He did a great job. That was nice of him to celebrate that aspect of my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really cool. Okay, so I have some fun, like, just little quick questions. I'll just okay. look at my notepad here. So my first one is, uh, I'm assuming that you also read, since you are an author. 
Mm -hmm. So my one question was, what is your top read of 2020 so far? My top read. Well, does a reread count? Yeah, does that, that, that could count. Um, actually, I have it behind me. Um, where is it here? Oh, yeah, I don't know if you're familiar with Dan Millman. I'm not, nope. <laughs> okay, he was the guy who wrote um, the Peaceful Warrior series that became a movie. And it was about his life and his life. I can't hold it up so you can see it. He's written many, many books and I got to meet him and he was a gymnast mm -hmm. and he had a motorcycle accident and it destroyed his career. So he set up out to find some kind of peace to try to understand why did this happen? All he worked for, why was it taken from him? And he met this man named Socrates who worked in a gas station but it turns out he was actually one of these, you know, like a Yoda kind of person. And he taught him these secrets of life. And then he started to, to write about him. It was called The Way of the Peaceful Warrior. And it changed oh. my life when I read that book. Mm -hmm. Because it's about how to deal with the things that come at you in a positive way. And, you know, it's, it's easy to just sulk and be angry and bitter. And um, so then he wrote this book about the life you were born to live. And he has a theory that numbers play a part in the life we actually do live. Our birth dates, all different things. And he factors and he gives profiles of what you should be doing, what you're, you're good at, all these things. And it's fascinating to see if it fits. And I hadn't read it in a while, so I picked it up again and started reading it again. And it's just one of those things that gets you thinking. And it also motivates you to say, okay, I need a plan. I'm not gonna just wander through my life. I, I wanna see if I can make a path for myself and where do I wanna be? And what do I want to be doing? And what can I capitalize on? What, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? What do I need to work on? He's very big about that, that if you don't learn from your mistakes, they get bigger and bigger and harder and harder. Mm -hmm. Because pain teaches us to pay attention. So he just, he's such a really interesting motivational guy and that uh, he turned his life around, took a tragedy and turned it into something that helps people. So that's actually what I'm in the middle of now is, is refreshing uh, that book. Cause you can read it like 20 times and still see things that you didn't see before. Right. So then my next, that actually like, this wasn't one of the questions I planned, but now I'm just curious. I mm -hmm. want to know what your favorite genre is of book. Like what kind of genre do you like to read? I have always loved nonfiction. Um, yeah, I was gonna guess I, that. <laughs> yeah, no, I just, I read every sports biography, every book about anything that I found interesting, but mostly sports. Um, I, I, I just liked the idea of reading something that was true because what I discovered is truth is usually stranger than fiction. And I was the kid who read like the World Book of Guinness, Rec World Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> yeah read it over and over and over again. I'm like, oh, who has the longest fingernails in the world? I just found factual information fascinating. And I love history. So, you know, um, yeah. in fact, on my to-do list is to read 1776. Somebody just recommended it to me by David McCullough. Uh, fantastic writer. And um, I just, I love what real human beings do, how they overcame things, the bad things they did too, but the lessons to learn from the people who have been on this planet so that maybe we can do better. Mm -hmm. But I also, I love the, how people became heroes who didn't intend to be. I mean, just when you look at the American revolution, what were the odds? But those were people who just said, I'm not going to quit. Yeah. I'm going to fight for it. And it, it reminds you also what this country started, to, you know, how we started and the, the things human beings are capable of. So I, I just, I love any kind of nonfiction, particularly sports uh, and history, but um, that, that's the genre I generally read because when I start to read fiction, I think, oh, I can't do that now. Somebody came up with a really good idea for that character and now I can't do it. And I don't want to be influenced by, by what somebody else did. I want to just go in with fresh eyes. When I, I, I'm probably going to go back to writing nonfiction after this book for a while. And um, cause I have a lot of ideas about things that are going on in the world and whatnot. And, um, but yeah, long story short, I, I like nonfiction. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, it's actually really funny that you say that you're like a very factual person. Cause when I was younger, I used to love to read encyclopedias. 
which is a really weird thing to do, but no, I just found it entertaining. I just, I am a lover of language and knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, 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 you know, I was the kid who would read everything, including street signs. <laughs> Seriously, I, I, because I just, yeah. and I would say, I wonder where that word came from. I wonder who invented a silly word like that. You know, I mean, I just was always interested in language and to this day. And uh, mm -hmm. so I think that's why I wanted to go into teaching English. And, but I've always been a tech geek as well. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, all my career, I've tried to bring technology into the classroom. And little did I know how, where that was going to end up, <laughs> which is... <laughs> Now maybe it's a little too much. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's all technology now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, my last three questions are, they're more like fun because I, like when some people hold authors up on like a pedestal and they're mm -hmm. kind of like untouchable, whereas mm -hmm. I feel like authors are just like you, well, you are an author, but like authors are just like you and I, where they're just people that wrote a book. And so mm -hmm. I like to ask them questions about, other authors so my question was who is your favorite author well i can tell you that when i was a teenager i used to carry around ann rice's interview with the vampire okay I, I i like horror i you know i like that kind of if i had to pick a genre of fiction i would probably be horror i was just fascinated at how she could take a thing like a vampire mm -hmm. and make it sexy and interesting and dramatic and scary and all these things um so i know she was an influence uh, early on uh, again it would probably be a lot of nonfiction authors that i i would pick and that's the thing about writers we're not better than anybody we're not different than anybody we just have this this idea that i have to say this i have to tell this story or i have to tell this truth that's the only difference is that we're lucky enough to have a way to do it. Mm -hmm. In other words, if, if you have the ability to, to write in a way that people like and accept, that's one of the things I got from the New York times. The feedback I kept getting was people said, now that I've read your article, now I understand. And I think that was the teacher in me mm -hmm. because I had to teach people how to understand things. And I, and it came through in my writing that they were so appreciative and oh, that's what i get from this book as well people saying wow now i didn't know anything about skating but now i really get what that sport's about and it's really interesting um and that's the greatest compliment a writer can get is that people invested in the the experience and came away from it knowing something they didn't know before so right no that was a great answer um Okay, so then my next one would be, what is your ideal reading spot? Reading spot. Mm -hmm. Probably maybe sitting on the couch. I have, um, I just have a bay window put in. I show oh. it to you. I'm on a, a, a desktop computer. I can't turn yeah. it. But, um, and when it's a nice day and I have plants on it, and when the sun comes in, and but you can still see outside and see the world, yeah. you feel like, I just have to kind of nestle onto the couch and dive into this book mm -hmm. because it's, it's warm and inviting and it, it, it lulls you into this sense of relax, enjoy the book kind of thing. Because if I have to sit and try to, and I'm tense or I have things I have to do, I can't enjoy reading because yeah. um, I was going to blow through it. But I would say, yeah, just sitting on my couch on a sunny day at my bay window mm -hmm. and let the world come in. And, um, and then by going into the book, I shut the world out. And you need to do that. <laughs> yeah. At times. That sounds very peaceful. <laughs> mm, yeah. Okay. And then my last question. This is an interesting one. So if you were a book, what would your book title be? And well, you can think I about think, this one a bit. <laughs> well, I think... I would use a quote from Shakespeare, actually, if I'm allowed to do that as a book title. <laughs> um, because um, my mom gave me a t-shirt one time and she said, I bought this for you because it is you. And it was from, I forgot which play, but it was a Shakespeare play. And the quote was, though she be but little, she is fierce. Because I'm That's under awesome. five feet tall. <laughs> and, and 
so so you know but i'm told i have a lot of energy and i'm very intense and all of that and i think that's who i am i'm, mm. I'm this this force <laughs> that is not going to be stopped if I feel what I'm doing is a good thing and it's an important thing, um, or just my voice. Uh, it's hard to explain to someone, if you love to read, it's hard to explain to someone who doesn't love to read why, but you know it, you feel it inside of yourself. And the same thing with writing. Mm -hmm. You write, or I think you should write because you have to, and you're not going to be happy unless you do it. And even if you write just a diary, I mean, it doesn't have to be something that gets published or made into a movie, um, but express those feelings. Um, and if somebody else is better for it, that's wonderful. Um, but if anybody writes because they think they're going to get rich, don't. Mm -hmm. It's a tough business. There are more no's than yeses and more disappointments than successes. But that can't be why you write. And I think that should go for anything. You, you shouldn't be an athlete because you're going to get rich, although they probably will be. Um, do it because you love the game. That's, mm. that's why when I saw what they were doing to gymnastics and then skating, because gymnastics went through its own um, terrible uh, controversy about the judging and then, of course, the other things that came up. Um, but don't dishonor the fact that you're lucky enough to be able to play a sport and you're good at it and you can maybe make a living at it. And what about the fans? That's the thing that bothers me the most. What, how they treat the fans like they're idiots. They can't possibly know they're being fooled. Who cares if they know? We, we've got the power and we're going to use it. And that's why I enjoyed knocking the people who are running the skating world to their knees. Mm -hmm. Um, because they were they were just just treating everybody so badly and disrespectfully, and they were ruining people's lives. The fans would get over it; they get mad, and then they'll move on. But what it did to the skaters, uh, there have been skaters who committed suicide. Um, it just this should not be happening. Um, yeah. you no, know, everybody can't win, and, you know, and that's just a life lesson. But as long as, long as you did your best and you were fairly judged, then you live with it. But when you know it was already done before you even had your chance. Think about that one. If that applied to other sports, where let's say the, at the Super Bowl, the referees get together and say, I like this team, I don't like that team, so every call I make, I'm gonna make it against the team I don't like. Would people stand for that for very long? <laughs> right? No, think think about due to the sport. Yeah. Skating got away with it for decades. Mm -hmm. And how many lives were destroyed? How many dreams were destroyed in the process? And so um, I just hope whoever decides they want to write, do it for the right reasons, for, your, for yourself, for other people, whatever. But don't do it because you think you're going to make money. Don't do it because you think you can turn somebody's head around and make them believe something you believe just because you want them to. Give them the facts. Present your argument. See, I think of writing nonfiction almost like being a lawyer in a court of law. <laughs> present your present your case yeah. and step back and let people be the judge themselves um of what what's real what's right and and you know how they feel about things that's the writers who take advantage of people and use the power that they do have drive me crazy mm -hmm. i just don't think it's fair because now people just simply don't know which end is up what to believe what's real what's not. how can you make a good judgment no matter what the situation is if you don't know what the truth is right the people you trusted to tell you didn't do that for you okay well <laughs> um <laughs> I, that's all the questions i have okay. thank you so much for being the first author in this new yes. series on the channel i'm honored um, is there anything else you want to say about your book before we conclude uh just that uh, I hope everybody will give it a chance if they want a good read. Some people have said it's like a good beach read or summer. Oh, well, we can't go to the beach, maybe, but a summer yeah. read. Um, and um, it's about much more than the sport of figure skating itself. And it'll make you think, it'll make you feel. I hope you're going to get mad and you're going to root for characters and hate other characters because there's <laughs> some pretty despicable people in the book uh, based on real people. Um, right. And, you know, I, I just hope people will see the sport differently, but also see all sports differently and not stay silent. If people will just speak up and say, that is not right, it needs to change, it will. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what I'd like them to know. 
and where they can get it, which is pretty much everywhere. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so you can get it on Amazon and like everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere? And okay. if they want to check out my website because I have all the articles and things I've written in the past. So if they want to see where it came from, oh, that's the one thing about the book. I decided to put in a nonfiction section. Mm -hmm. because so many people asked me questions about the sport all the time I was writing the articles and everything. And I realized I don't want anybody to be left saying, Oh, I wish I understood this, or I wish I knew this, or I knew that. And um, the feedback I'm getting is that is very helpful. Some people read it before they read the book and some people read it after they read the, the fictional part of the book, but um, it makes it a little different. It's really like a hybrid. It's, it's part nonfiction, part fiction, and somewhere they meet in between. Uh, but what's important to me is the essential truths that do come out of the story. Right. Okay. Well, so you guys heard it from Lisa. You can get these books anywhere. But uh, I will put all the links down in the description. And I will also put her website up there or down there too. So that you guys can check all of that out yourselves. Um, like I said, Lisa, thank you so much for being on the channel. I really appreciate it. And I think this was really fun. And I got to learn a lot more about you. So that was a lot of fun as well. Uh, yeah, just thanks for being on the channel. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And keep doing what you're doing. You're doing a great service. <laughs> get people to read, but also using technology to make them enjoy it even more. And, then I, and I look forward to following you <laughs> as you go through this process. You're doing a great Thank job. You. And that's it for the interview, guys. Uh, let me know what you thought of the interview. Let me know if you guys know any authors that would like to participate in an interview style video like this that I could get in touch with. I definitely think you guys should check out Lisa's new book. It sounds really interesting, as you could tell from our banter back and forth during the interview. Uh, I'm definitely interested to see how it turns out. Like, it seems very intriguing, and I just, I want to know. Anyways, you guys know the drill. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification button so you can know when I upload videos. I post videos every Monday and Thursday, and now occasionally on Saturdays for author interviews. And until next time, keep on reading.